Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for a little bit of uh, history um, and uh, to share with you a couple of events that happened on this day many years ago, the 10th of May. I'm going back to the year 1994 to share on something that we have spoken about um, on this platform, and, and that is Nelson Mandela. Um, after, of course, 27 years in prison, uh, when he was eventually set free in 1990 and ran for elections under the ANC, it was on this day that the presidency of Nelson Mandela began, 10th of May in 1994. It eventually lasted for five years and, uh, of course, ended in 1999. But this was the start, you know, of a very, very beautiful five-year legacy that, um, you know, of course, uh, still remains in uh, the world's history and makes him one of the most popular presidents in um, history. It started on this day after he was inaugurated as president of South Africa. He was the first non-white head of state in South African history, as well as the first to take office following the dismantling of the apartheid system and the introduction of full multiracial democracy. He was also the oldest head of state in South Africa's history, taking office at the age of 75. Um, at that time, his aid was taken into consideration as part of his decision not to seek re-election in 1999. Not very many times you see things like that play out. You know, see an 80-year-old African president say, oh, I'm too old for this job, I'm going to let it go. Pull. That's a very, very um, unusual uh, move because here, here we see people who are almost 200 years still trying to change the constitution to give them an extra 12 years in power. Um, but yes, Nelson Mandela's legacy, of course, ended in, uh, well, the presidency ended in 1999. The 1994 general election held on 27th of April. And like I said, it was South Africa's first multiracial election um, at that time. Mandela, of course, took a particular interest in helping to resolve the long-running dispute between Gaddafi's Libya um, and, of course, um, South Africa. Um, yeah, you know, I think that's, that's most of it. You know, it started today and ended five years later in 1999. Fantastic. Uh, may we never forget, you know, the history of people like Nelson Mandela because they shaped Africa to what it is. Right yeah, now. and he was also, I think he was also one of the people who was influential in getting the World Cup to South Africa. I remember that was one of the, you know, big things that he was able to achieve um, or he was, um, um, you know, accredited with, you know, before he eventually passed on a couple of years after that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, um, in every single way, Nelson Mandela has, be, has been an icon, has been a legend, has been um, a phenomenal uh, person in the world's history, not just in South Africa's mm -hmm. history. And uh, which other Nigerian presidents, apart from the, the earlier ones like uh, Namdi Azikiwe, which post-independence or civilian Nigerian presidents would you say deserves that kind of rep and legacy? Okay. You, don't, you don't have to answer. I can't even hear the question. Next, on today in history. <laughs> We're still going back to the 1990s. I mean, that's the history of where this is coming from. But in 2018, Spotify, the music streaming platform, took of all of Ari Kelly's music off its playlist because of allegations of sexual abuse. So Ari Kelly has, you know, always been a fantastic singer, but since the 1990s, there's been, you know, allegations of sexual abuse against him, you know, uh, allegations that he had abused teenagers, young girls, you know, held them against their will, you know, allegations that he had been involved in child pornography. There's just been so much, you know, sexual allegations surrounding Ari Kelly. Even though I think in around 2008, he was acquitted of about 13 charges of child pornography. But there's been a campaign to mute Ari Kelly, you know, for people to stop listening to his music. Because even though he, he's, he's a fantastic singer, you know, sings great love songs and all of that. But the artist behind that voice, you know just isn't one that you can you, you can confidently leave your child around you know so when spotify in 2018 this very day may 10 you know took away ari kelly's songs from their playlist ari kelly's management reacted to this negatively saying you know you talked about how the songs that must be banned on your platform you know, she, she might have violated some certain things, but Arakeli's song does not violate any of your or any of your clauses. You know, your grievance is against Arakeli. Then Spotify says, yes, our policy is about the song, but when the artist in question, you know, breaches some sexual rules, 
then he definitely will become victim of, you know, this app policies. So Ari Kelly's songs, you can actually go on Spotify and search for Ari Kelly's songs, you will find it. But what this means is that Spotify will not actively promote Ari Kelly's songs on its platform and that Ari Kelly's songs will be removed from the editorial playlist from Spotify. So when you take a look at um, Ari Kelly's history of, you know, all the sexual abuse that he's been alleged to have committed, you find that Ari Kelly, in fact, was a victim of sexual abuse. He mentioned that when he was about eight years old, he was raped by a female family member. So he was sexually abused. And it just reminds me of the quote that says, hurting people hurt people. So he was a victim of sexual abuse. A female you know, family member raped him when he was a child. And uh, according to the allegations we've seen, he's gone on to you know, sexually abuse other children you know, getting involved in child pornography, even though he was acquitted of those charges. But that's what the fact is. Today in history, May 10, 2018, Spotify took away his songs from the editorial playlist. Well, I've, I've been robbed once. I, I never decided to rob people. <laughs> it's never, yes, you know, I, I know people always, you know, will reach back to a person, person's history and, you know, try to see where they're coming it's from. It's not justified, see, you know, but that I really abuse, is, you know, is the history. It's part of, you yes. know, their history. And there's a, a couple of times where you see people who commit, you know, mass murders and, and the media goes back and say he was abused by his father. He grew up in a very, very, you know, abusive environment. Nobody cares. It's not I, justified, it's not, like it, I mentioned. It doesn't, yeah, it but it doesn't, doesn't take away justify. the influence of those experiences on your life. Really? Uh, well, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm going to struggle to agree. If you, you know, check, that, if you check psychology, um, yeah, and the history of abusers, you know, people who just do terrible things, their childhood, parenthood, you know, is always faulty. Yes, you, 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 you either you, find you maybe learn. their father uh, abused um, them, their mother abused them. Yeah. It was just like I'm, I like, like I'll keep saying, it's not justified, yeah. but it doesn't take away the influence that those your early childhood experiences have on your life, your character, and who you become as an adult. Absolutely, and I, I agree with that. You know, I'm I'm just trying to hold on to the. It doesn't in any way still justify. You know that over time you weren't able to learn different. Um, if you, is it brings back this um, analogy of uh, two people who. One of uh, two boys who grew up in a, in a, in a, in a, an environment where their father was a heavy drinker. One of them grew up and you know learned, to, of course, I continued to be a drinker and you know I was an alcoholic rather. Um, and the other one completely stayed away from alcohol. And when you ask both of them, you know why you know you are this way, they both gave the same answer. The first one who was an alcoholic says, well, I grew up you know, with an alcoholic father, and of course I learned and I continued you know, with that. While the other one says about the same thing, you know, I grew up with, with an alcoholic father, but when I grew up, I, you know, that's, not the, what, that's what I saw and that's what I wanted to live my life uh, you know, as. So um, yes, you know, there's that possibility of you being abused and then becoming an abuser, but it, it, I always feel like there's always a space where you grow up and become an adult and you should be able to learn better and be better. Um, it's also speaking a lot, you know, about cancel culture and how people um, really get to be, you know, somehow, some way punished for their atrocities. Kevin Spacey, R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, all of them. You know, there's always somehow, some way that the things that you did in the past, when they eventually, you know, come out in the open, um, people stop. To, you know, they they want to dissociate themselves from you. They don't want to be involved with you. Um, deals, Israel at this point, I lost, I think it was a BMW deal, you know, because of statements that he made. But that's, you know, the culture in those parts of the, of the world. Um, but it's not the same thing here. You know, we still have a, a senator who um, assaulted a woman physically and was caught on video and can't even deny the fact that he did it. And he's still in, in, in the Senate today. Still, of course, you know, earning, and nobody has in any way decided, oh, we are going to pull back from associating with this person. Um, well, you know anything? He even received awards at some point. And he become um, even more that. popular. Yes, you know, same thing with the um, uh, Code of Conduct Tribunal. Um, 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 uh, yes, you know, still is that that's so that's the difference between their environment and our environment. You know, and, and it almost seems like Nigeria rewards bad behavior. That's almost what you know our country seems like. So we need to do better, um, not because. You know, we, we should, I'm not saying we should jump, you know, on the cancel culture, you know, drug and immediately anybody's accused, whether it's guilty or not, we immediately cancel them. Mm -hmm. But as long as they've been found guilty and they actually did those things, then yes, we should be able to um, cancel certain people, you know, so mm -hmm. they're no longer role models. Anyway, that's what we have for you today. We have um, 
A little bit more to share with you. We're getting into a conversation on political parties. 74 of them were deregistered by INEC sometime in 2020 um, after the 2019 elections. Yes. Um, INEC, of course, has released a statement saying that they will not go back on the deregistration the of those parties. Um, they, of course, these parties are campaigning, you know, and of course asking that INEC, um, you know, uh, re-registers them. Um, but INEC has uh, taken its stand and it says that it will wait for a Supreme Court ruling before these parties can be registered again. We're getting into that conversation next with the chairman of Liberation Movement. He's going to be joining us live here on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us.